Uh, no funguses, everyone's happy. I'm going to bed confident that these orchids are going to wake up happy and refreshed just like me. Good evening, Dave's Orchid Oasis family. It's a uh, rainy evening. It's been raining all day here in Sarasota, Florida, which is rare. It's almost always sunny, blue skies, beautiful. So it's been raining for two days. It's supposed to rain tomorrow. So what do we do? We start to get a little nervous because in the summer, right, it's August. So it's hot all the time. It's humid and it rains a fair amount, which is like the perfect formula for fungus. And I find that fungus, and I think most orchid people would find that fungus is the number one biggest problem when it comes to orchids. Uh, I lose more to way more orchids to fungus than insects or anything else, really. Um, so what did I do? Started to freak out a little bit. So one thing you can do when you're trying to protect from bugs, I'm sorry, from viruses, is do a soil drench. So what that means is usually you see people like spraying the plant whenever they want to get rid of the fungus. When it's raining a lot like this, sometimes people will preemptively, uh, before the fact, spray everything with some sort of fungicide to, right, to, if there is something forming, it's gonna die. So what I do is in situations like this is I do something called a soil drench. So what you do, I have it right here, my trusty thigh mill. Again, this is like the go-to. Uh, so it's a systemic fungicide. You don't want to be using it all the time. But yes, you can spray it on all the leaves. And it's because it's systemic, what that means is the leaves suck it in into the tissue of the leaf itself. So if the fungus, it kind of dies from the inside out, right? So if the fungus gets in there, because if you put like spray like bleach or Lysol or something on a leaf that has a fungus on it, it's probably not going to kill all of it. You have to get something on the inside, systemic. It sounds kind of weird, right? Having the, like your your orchid is like filled with this chemical. It's like it's infiltrated every cell of the plant. That's just how it works. I mean, this is this is used on every farm on every, for decades, and this is how they keep fungus out of their stuff. So. One way that I like, which I think is a good way to get around some dangers of this, because, right, I mean, orchids don't like being sprayed. Their leaves and their buds and their flowers are very sensitive. So what you do is, is something called a soil drench. All that means is, is you, I mixed up like 10 gallons of water. Um, I have like, I'll show it to you another time, but I have this thing that, you know, pour the water out. It's like a sprayer but a heavy duty like fast big volume sprayer but so i put the the appropriate amount of powder in there and put and then what i did was is i went around and like i would get my orchid here and i'd go shh, and i'd pour it in the mix and not, so i'm drenching it right so i'm putting a bunch in there and until it starts dripping out the bottom so the soil is literally drenched with the thigh mill now why we why do we do this it's just as effective as spraying it on the leaves because what happens is the roots suck up the thigh mill and since, since it's um, systemic, it travels up through the leaves and the flower. And it sounds crazy, but like if you have a fungus on a flower and you put a systemic fungicide on the root, it could kill the fungus on the flower, right? It goes up into the whole plant. So I think it's a cool way of doing it. I think it's low risk. You're just, you can't really do it on the mounted stuff, but anything, like if you look here, all of these, like on this table over here, as you can see, everything is in pots. So all of those got drenched just the soil. I didn't get the, right? Because if you look at some of this stuff, like if you can see, you see the, yeah, you can see it. The fungus on this here, and now it's killing the leaves. By pouring the stuff in the pot, it cures this up here. It's crazy, it doesn't make any sense. But, that's just how it works. That's just how it works. So, I have been drenching my soil today because of the weather. Um, it is still wet and muggy and drizzly and crummy. It's actually really good lighting. 
good lighting for shooting a video. This like evening light. It's a good time for photography. Okay. Look else what look at look at what I got here. Which I'm pretty excited about. You see that up there? It's a fan. Look at this. Oh. Because it's been raining, the it's short circuited. That's not good. Oh! How cool is that? So what am I gonna do with that? I'm so psyched about that, that's a big deal. Um, so that is like, if you look at the direction that it's blowing, right? That's like the crux of the collection. So there's gonna be literal, not 24 seven, but close of this, that's a very, that's like an industrial fan. And you can feel the air from that thing way like, beyond all of these plants. It's really, really powerful. So there's gonna be this constant breeze going through the orchid collection, which the longer I do this and the more I read about it, airflow is a big, big, big deal. Big deal. Greenhouses really struggle with it because it's enclosed. Airflow is a big deal. Not enough egg airflow is going to cause fungus, right? If there's no airflow, it keeps the leaves wet or longer which gives a place for fungus to grow and bacteria and all that stuff. So I'm gonna have this air blowing through here all the time. I mean, it's so wet right now, there's nothing I can do, right? I mean, it's, it doesn't matter if I have it on or not, this stuff's gonna stay wet. Another interesting thing is whenever you hear about people saying that you should water your roots like thoroughly, like enough, well, we can kind of see a good example here do you see how this guy is like green? Oh my goodness, look at the size of this thing. Uh, so you see how this is like green, like with some white spots on it? That is where you wanna be. That's a, look, I mean, look at this thing. I mean, this has gotta be some sort of world record holder. I mean, what the heck? It's a Vanda Adasac Happiness. That's the name of the Vanda. Putting it back up there. Hope it doesn't fall. But that shows you, since it's been raining all day, in nature, that's what color the roots are. That's what color you want the roots to be. Whenever you water, that is ideal. So this is my flowering area. Um, as you can see, there's a lot of stuff flowering. In August, this time of year, dendrobiums are going crazy. And again, these, these they're called hard cane dendrobiums. Uh, they're different than soft cane. We'll talk about that a different day. But, so all of these, look at this. Oh, look at the size of that. Look at these, some of them are small little blooms, some are big like the one I just showed you. I got this one special order, very fancy, very unique. See this, it's like purple lip and then it's white. It's very, the contrast is very stark, very cool. I mean, there's a lot of, I mean, they come in and my puppy is very upset because I didn't let him in. Uh, see, there's another color. Just look at how many blooms these things have. And this will last two to three months. They will, they're the longest lasting orchids. They are awesome. They're just awesome, awesome orchids. I mean, my goodness, I have a lot of these things. Here's another one. I mean, that is cool. And they're so easy. So easy, you just sit them there. For my friends that don't wanna deal with orchids at all, I tell them take a, a hard cane dendrobium, stick it outside, like under like a tree or under a screen, and then just let nature rain on it. And you're gonna get flowers. The only thing to be careful of is they are super, super annoyed by cold. So if it gets to be in like the 30s, they're done. You have to uh, get them inside. That's the only thing that makes them a little difficult. You gotta be a little careful. I have to come and rescue my Penny because Penny is not gonna stop you barking. Penny, say hello. You gonna go inside? Okay. That is a mini golden doodle. This is really messy, but this is like my orchid space, which we will 
go over someday all the tools of the trade, everything I've learned through the years that I need. So this here, this is an Encyclia. They're not real popular because there's not that many varieties and they're not like super, super colorful. They usually smell pretty good, but this one does not. This Vanda, I mean, orchids are so awesome because like every day you, you, when you have a collection this size of like 400 of them, every day you go out and like this, like where did this come from? It smells so good. Such a deep purple. Vandas are very easy in the right climate. I keep getting all these comments and questions about, you know, what do I do? I can't get my flower to bloom. And I, this is a bad, it's probably not what you want to hear. A lot of it has to do with just your climate. It's hard to reproduce. I mean, these things live in this area. So even in like North Carolina, you can get away with it because in the summer they're outside because it's hot, like it should be in humid. And in the winter, you have to get by by bringing them in inside for a while and all that's doable. But the fact of the matter is if you don't have heat, humidity, sun light, sunlight, water, it's tough. I mean, it depends on your orchid. Like I can't grow cymbidiums down here or miltonias. There's certain kinds that I don't even mess with because they're just, they don't like the real, real hot weather. Uh, but I do, I keep getting these questions and I feel like I wish I had a better answer for you, but the reality is it's just not the right climate. I mean, I wish I could give you better news than that, but I don't try that hard. I mean, you see these orchids. I mean, it's not like, I, I mean, I'm out here every day, but it's not that much work that I'm doing. I mean, most of this stuff is just, they grow on their own. They're very low maintenance. Orchids are not that hard in the right climate. They just grow, they grow slowly. They're pretty, uh, Besides some diseases like funguses and bacteria and stuff, which you have to keep an eye out for, really, just as long as they get enough water and light, you're going to have growing orchids. Now, I'm a little neurotic. I go a little crazy with the supplements and the fertilizer and the this and the that. But, um, yeah, a lot of people make orchids out to be way harder than they actually are. Because, really, like, if I, if I left this all of this for three months. When I came back, it would be 95% fine. I mean, part of that is because it's August and they're gonna still be getting some rain so I don't have to worry about water as much. If I left here for a year and came back, I would say, I don't know, 75% would be salvageable and okay and bring back and be happy again. And these things are tough, tough, tough. So. Orchids are not that tricky. People make it sound like it's so hard. Oh, orchids, you're like a magician. Oh, how do you do that? I can't grow orchids. Yes, you can. You put them outside under a tree and you water them. Like it's not rocket science in the right climate. And then before you know it, I mean, some of these orchids, I don't look at for a month ever, right? I, every once in a while, I'll glance at it. Maybe when it flowers, I'll notice it. And suddenly I say, oh my goodness, this plant is sick. But I'm not really walking around looking at each and every plant every day, it's completely unnecessary. As long as you have enough air movement too. I'm all excited about my fan. So for anyone out there that's thinking about getting a fan, do it. It'll make a huge difference. You gotta love the fan. I'm excited. I'm gonna turn it on right now. All night it's gonna run. It's gonna start drying off the roots of these orchids. No fungus. I hit it with the soil drench of the fungus side. No fungi, no funguses. Everyone's happy. I'm going to bed confident that these orchids are going to wake up happy and refreshed just like me. <laughs> Be blessed.